Hi Pisces, this is for Pisces Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or if you're spying on a Pisces. Personally, I think the moon signs resonate the best when it comes to love stuff. And so for single Pisces, if you are not sure what your moon sign is, there's a link in the description box below if you wanna figure that out. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, Pisces, just a few quick things that I don't want to forget because I've been forgetting it in other videos. Um, if you would like to enter to win a free 20 minute video, you're entered every month if you just sign up one time. You just go to my website in the description box below and sign up to win. And then if you're doing it from mobile, there is a little, uh, it's like a smiley face icon at the bottom that you'd click on and that's how you enter if you are also interested in free readings um, that are personal. I did a Facebook, not a Facebook, I did a YouTube <laughs> live uh, for Valentine's Day last, I guess that was last month now, yeah. And a lot of people got a lot out of that. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna do it again in April, uh, probably the first couple weeks, okay? But I won't probably announce that here. I tend to do that more on Facebook. So if you wanna find out the dates for that, I'll be posting those there. Um, if you're interested in just like daily readings, I pull a card of the day pretty often for Snapchat. But if you want those very consistently, like a full daily reading, those are on Patreon. And so all those links are below. Okay, let's get started. Um, this reading is going to cover like what is your month looking like in general, what it is you think you want versus what you actually need, how other people are perceiving you as a single, and um, the best course of action in order to draw in the love that you desire, you know, to bring in your soulmate or your, your twin flame. And then also because we're in a Mercury retrograde period, I want to talk about how the Mercury retrograde is going to affect you in your love life. Um, because, you know, this reading's from March 16th through April 16th, and the retrograde hits on the 22nd through the 15th. So, um, you know, in retrograde times, that's when a lot of X's come back, and I want to kind of help you get an idea on how to navigate that. Okay, so in general, what does love look like for single Pisces? And they're saying, this is similar to what Aries started with as well. It's, it's not a good month to make decisions really in regards to your love life they're saying this is a month for fun which is better than what Aries had so yay winning they're like keep doing what you're doing um you can't you might not expect things to be much different in this period of time um but keep your energy high keep your enthusiasm going they're saying that everybody that you're meeting like nobody's like really hiding anything from you. There's nothing to be paranoid or worried about. You're seeing them as they are. And a part of this is because of, um, I'll put it in the description box if I can remember, but uh, a part of this is because of the Pisces and sort of everything uh, for the month of March where you're extra intuitive Everybody else is extra intuitive too, but especially you. You're gonna assert more like dominance and control over your feelings and, and you'll be more psychic. So everything that there would be to know about somebody, you can suss that out really quickly. You know, like it'd be really challenging for somebody to misrepresent themselves or their intentions to you, which is really good for you actually, if you're trying to decide is, is this person a good match or is this person, you know what I mean? Okay, so what is it that you think you want? in this period of time, and they're saying, well, <laughs> some of you think that you want something painful um, because you know you're gonna learn from your pain. And that's probably not a very cog cognitive desire, but something deeper in the subconscious that you're unaware of. <laughs> some of you are trying to draw in shitty relationships because that's where you learn your best lessons. Um, so for a lot of you, this looks like with the Queen of Swords energy, oftentimes what she's doing is she's welcoming people back. So a good thing we're reading on that ret retrograde energy here in a few minutes because... The queen of energy is like drawing people in. Hey, come here. I'm going to give you a second chance. I'm going to give you a third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance. But if you fuck it up, I will cut you. 
right? That's how she is. Um, and subconsciously, that might be what you're trying to draw in or attract, okay? So you might be um, bringing exes back, and we'll get to that in a while, whether that's for your highest good or not. But what is it that you should actually um, be drawing in instead? Like, what is it you actually need in regards to love? And they say you need to... Um, not communicate with certain people. So I think we know which direction this is headed. You definitely need to not reach out to certain people. I think it's making it pretty clear. Um, you know, relationships that ended, uh, divorces or divorce-like kind of energies where, you know, it's like just, it's done. We separated our assets. Need to stay that way. <laughs> oh boy. Pretty clear. Um, they're saying what you should be doing right now is thinking about all of the things that you want in regards to love in a very, very detailed way, but not necessarily looking for them yet, just getting those down on paper. You know, like really, really working out the details of the kind of love that you want to draw in. So how are other people perceiving you this month? And it's saying um, other people can see that you probably want to go back to past relationships, that you still have connections there, that you're not, um, you know, releasing your past. But it, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, uh, you know, ex-lovers and things like that. This could also mean, you know, ways of doing things from before as well. They're saying that as a result of this, they might approach you with caution. They might um, be very slow moving in regards to trying to make a relationship with you. However, they are hopeful that relationships could turn into what they actually desire or be even better than what they hoped for with you because they are very in tune to your emotional um love and compassionate energy, okay? They really love your sensitivity and they think that that would be a very good thing for them in a relationship. So what's the best course of action for you in order to get what you want to draw in relationships, even though people might be a little bit hesitant because of their own perception of your situation? And what it's saying is think about what you want for the very long term. Like, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 years from now, what kind of a person do you want to be with? What kind of a relationship do you want? What kind of a living situation do you want? Um, thinking about those details is going to help you draw in the right match, okay? Because you could draw in a person who is very emotionally wonderful for you, right? And you fall in love and the sex is good and all this stuff. But ultimately, at the end of the day, they want to sell all of their um, assets, you know, when they reach retirement and travel the world. And you're like, I want to live next to my parents and take care of them in their elderly years. Well, then you're not going to be a compatible match, you know, down the road. So they want you to really start thinking about what kind of a partner is actually the best type of a partner for me in the longer term, in the grander scope of things. Um, what's another good course of action that you could take? And they're saying um, sleeping is going to be very, very important for you, okay? We are healing in our sleep, but then we also have this energy of not deceiving ourselves, not misleading ourselves. You know, um, we need to make a really good point of discerning the difference between our intuition, our gut instinct, you know, that spiritual message that we receive from the universe, God, a lot, angels, whatever. Um, and, you know, like a subconscious desire that is maybe not healthy for us. So how is it that we are best equipped to handle that, to work on this? And they're saying by using color energies. And so I would use... Um, Okay, so different ways that you can use color energies. Number one, chakra meditations, like clearing your chakras, activating them. Another thing that you should do is use like a white light energy coming through the top of your crown chakra and going all the way to your root chakra, like at your bottom where you're sitting. And then um, pushing light, you know, kind of through your body, picking up any psychic debris that you might have, any negative thoughts that you might have or fears, and then pushing those into the ground. Now, once you do that, um, let that white light kind of go through your body, out your feet, and then surround you in this big protective bubble.
people, okay? Because we don't want those negative thoughts to come back. We also need to cut cords of attachment. So if you haven't already seen the cords of attachment cutting video, um, I would recommend that. It's in the description box below as well. Because cords of attachment are not only, you know, um, attachments to exes, you know, like there, it's to toxic ways of thinking. It's to, um, you know, like negative thought patterns that we have, um, lack of forgiveness. And this could be in any relationship or it could be in a relationship to yourself as well. And so this is really important for you. Um, so how is the retrograde energy going to affect you in regards to your love life? Whoa. And they're saying, well, lucky for you, this could mean new love coming in. Hey! <laughs> um, and why is that? And they say because the retrograde energy um, combined with the Pisces and everything in March helps you to really go within yourself and figure out what is it that I want to nourish? What is most important to me on an emotional level? Like, how am I going to connect to other people on an emotional level? level? And how am I going to look at my pain and use the things that I've learned as assets moving forward into relationships? Um, you know, and how is being single right now and nourishing myself, caring for my inner self, actually to my maximum benefit? So um, you could take this a couple different ways. This could be new love coming in as a result of all the emotional healing and letting go of old garbage stuff. Um, or this could be about really loving yourself, which as you know, you have to do first before you're capable of having like a very stable um, and, you know, trusting relationship with another person. But what they're saying is, you know, this will give you the enthusiasm and the vigor to go out and find the right relationship for you, one that is fair, one that is balanced, and one that is actually karmically indebted to you for your past good deeds and relationships. So that is amazing. Um, so yay! It sounds like as a result of all of the emotional, you know, stuff floating around that you're faring a little bit better than the other signs this month in regards to love. And um, you are going to be paid back from the universe, you know, for all the hardships that you've gone through, um, you could experience more ease. So thanks for watching. Love and light. And I will see you for general readings in April. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!